I think there is going to be a little, there's going to be fallout, particularly in the West. Uh, interesting enough, I was just uh, in Japan, for instance, uh, and even in Korea. And while there is a little bit of a chilling, the industry is moving forward very quickly. Um, like, for instance, Hong Kong, you know, actually, I think tomorrow is going to be listing its first Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs, right? Hong Kong put out a virtual asset mm-hmm. policy as well. So it's kind of a tale of sort of two worlds almost in terms of how people feel about the industry at the moment. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you then, I mean, how how important is it for the reputation, to your point, of the industry that investors get their money back? Well, I mean, I think it looks uh, unlikely that investors are going to be able to mm. get their money back, uh, given everything that we know so far. Um, certainly, I think depositors and creditors are going to be the ones first in line. And people are already sort of have sort of writing it off anyway, or sort of taking big haircuts. I think one of the silver linings of the industry, though, is that uh, everything's moving towards more decentralization. If you think, for instance, what's happened recently with some of the news around Binance and some of the news around some other exchanges, actually, it's proving that they're able to withstand customer withdrawals. It's proving that they're actually doing the right thing in this particular case, where people can withdraw their funds. You know, Coinbase, Kraken, you know, Gemini. You know, they're all they're all fine, right? So it's it's uh, sort of battle testing the industry. The other one, of course, is awareness of self custody. Mm. Now people are sort of keeping money in exchanges when they need it, but taking it out for self-custody or giving it to trusted third-party custody providers, which I think, again, is an opportunity. You know, you know you've, and you've, again, it's sort of different uh, groups saying different things. For instance, Goldman Sachs has gone out and said, hmm, this is a good time to get into the industry. Let's look at acquiring. Let's look at sort of some, some asset purchases. And then you have other that are saying, hmm, we're not sure about this industry, right? So you see a very interesting bifurcation, but it just indicates that there's strength in the market. And actually, you know, these lessons, hard as they may be, provide basically important lessons for the industry and eventual sort of uh, clear regulation. Because I think we need to also be aware that the lack of regulation in, in a number of these countries have led for it uh, to, to FTX. And, you know, now all these exchanges, even if they're unregulated, are required to post their reserves publicly so that they can gain the trust of their customers. Just picking up on what you're saying about proof of reserves there, because, of course, that has been one of the big responses that we've seen from a lot of exchanges here, but it's it's not a perfect solution. So do you think that's really sufficient to try and calm investor nerves? It's not sufficient. I think you will need some level of sort of uh, proof from an auditor. You also have to look at basically what the liabilities might be. Is there debt on them, which is something that is harder to basically verify on chain. But at least it's the first step. And it's the first step of accountability, because, of course, one thing, is that at least when you have proof of reserves and when you start withdrawing from these reserves, you have to answer to them, right? So at least uh, at least there is one level of accountability, but it's not perfect, but it's a good first step.